Good evening, everyone. Welcome. I'm Jean Hairston, and I'd like to call to order this regular meeting of the Jackson Public School District Board of Trustees, October 2nd. I would um, first like to welcome Dr. Eric Green uh, with us tonight, our superintendent. Uh, Dr. Belcher, uh, will you introduce uh, the young person who will bring the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, tonight, I have the pleasure of introducing Michaela Garrett. Uh, Michaela is a fifth grade honor roll student from Baker Elementary School. She's the daughter of Michael Garrett and Miss Felicia Shields. <laughs> Michaela is a member of the Voice of Baker Bulldogs Choir and the Baker Pep Squad for her school. She, also, she is also a member of the Royal Heat Dance Squad. She enjoys cheering, dancing, and spending time at Party Safari. Her favorite <laughs> subject in school is math. When Michaela grows up, she has the desire to become a dance instructor as well as a choreographer. Um, Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and the invisible, and liberty and justice for all. Stay there, Mr. Wilson. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> uh, would Pastor Arthur Alvin Sutton please join us at the podium while I introduce you. Pastor Arthur Alvin Sutton is the pastor of the Progressive Missionary Baptist Church in Jackson, where his leadership abilities expand further than his church. He is the executive director for the General Missionary Baptist State Convention Young People's Department a board member of the General Missionary Baptist State Convention, the Southwest Regional Young People's Department, and affiliated with many, many more organizations. Pastor Sutton is a graduate of Forest Hill High School and Jackson State University. Presently, he is employed with the Jackson Public School District as the Dropout Prevention Coordinator. He is active in various religious, community, and civic organizations including the Jackson District Congress, NAACP, 100 Concerned Clergy, and president of the Forest Hill High School PTA. He is the son of the late Dr. Jesse Sutton, Jr., and the late missionary evangelist Delia K. Sutton of Jackson. Pastor Sutton is a family man and resides in Jackson with his wife of 28 years, the former Vani R. Gentry. They are the proud parents of three beautiful children, fondly called by Pastor Sutton, the ABC girls, Brittany, Ashley, and Courtney. Pastor Sutton believes that all of his accomplishments were made possible by trusting in the Lord. One of his favorite scriptures is, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. From Proverbs. Chapter 3. Please welcome Pastor Arthur Alvin Sutton. Amen. I'd like to say a good evening to all of you. Good evening. Um, I don't take this moment of inspiration lightly. I think that this is a day that has been coming ever since creation. For God knows everything that needs to happen, everything that needs to take place. First of all, I want to start by thanking the uh, board for uh, accepting me to come and do this moment of inspiration. I want to give a warm, hearty welcome to our new uh, pastor of the Jackson Public School. <laughs> Amen, Dr. Green. Let's give him a big rousing round of applause. <clears throat> as, as I take a look at what is taking place tonight, everything has a beginning 
and everything has an ending. And I believe tonight that we're on the dawn of a new day for Jackson Public Schools. All right. I come to inspire uh, our new superintendent that God has a great plan and work for you that is, lies ahead of you. I believe with all my might and spirit that you're the man for the job, that you're capable and you're able to do what is need to be done. Yes. For at the end of this year and the beginning of the next year, that we will find that Jackson Public School will not be rated where we're rated, Mm. will be higher than we have ever been before. Right. Mm. But we have to understand it takes a village to raise a child. Yes. Yeah. We also must understand that everything rises and falls in leadership. When I look at this uh, 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 board tonight, I, I look at y'all as a board of deacons and trustees <laughs> All right. that's having a pastor at the hem yeah. of what is taking place. And my prayer is that this board will work diligently with this new superintendent to make sure that everything that we need to do for our children will be done, it can be done, it shall be done, we settle for nothing less. Now, not only do you have a, 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 a superintendent, not only do you have a board, but we have workers. Mm -hmm. And it takes everybody working together to make this thing work. You right. Mm -hmm. Many members, but one body. Mm -hmm. We can do it. And the way we're going to do it, is by precepts and examples. And I believe if we put our arms around this superintendent, put our arms around this board, and do everything, ain't no time to talk about nobody. It's time for us to get down in the dirt, get dirty, let's get right, let's do what we need to do to make sure that Jackson Public School is the best school district in the United States of America. Man. I ain't got no help in this out. <laughs> in order for anything to get done, you got to believe that it can happen. Yes, so I'm, I'm a Jeremiah 29 and 11. I know the plans and thoughts that I think towards you. I'm putting it in there. Don't put me up no more. Said the Lord, the thoughts of good are even to give you an expected end. Yeah. Yes, so my inspiration to you all tonight, let's roll up our sleeves. Let's get ready. Let's hit the ground running. And let's do what we need to do. We thank God. See, they're, 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 they're in the Bible. And I'm going to sit down. Take your time, Take your time. God always prepares a leader. Amen, somebody. Amen. Doc, you took us to where we had to go. Amen. And now the, the, the torch has been passed. All right. Mm -hmm. And the key of it is, is that we're in this thing together. Yes. So I want to inspire all of y'all tonight. Let's cut the talking out. And let's get on the playing field. Yes. And let's make sure that we do everything that we can do in our heart, mind, and soul to do what is right for our children in Jackson Public School. So I say to y'all now, I inspire you all to do what you got to do. Run the race. The race is not given to the swift, can I say it, to the strong, but he that endureth to the end. Yes, so if you're ready and if you're willing to make this thing happen, let's get this ball rolling. Put your hand together. And let's give God some praise for what he's about to do. Amen. Amen. Now, for those of y'all who won't clap, you'll clap at the end. <laughs> Amen. I'm finished. Give this your inspiration. Do the job that you've been called to do. Amen. And like I tell them all the time, we got your back. Amen. Bless your heart. That's enough. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor Sutton. Those were truly some inspiring words. Thank you. Yes, sir. Progressive. Thank you so much, Pastor Sutton. We appreciate that. <laughs> Great words of inspiration. Uh, let the record show that we have a quorum established. We have six 
seated members and one member on the phone. We have a full board. Thank you, Mayor, and all of our council persons. So we are all present and accounted for. Um, board members, we have the agenda presented to us. Do I hear uh, any questions or amendments? And if none heard, do I hear a motion to adopt the agenda as distributed? So moved. Secretary second. Second. All in favor of adopting the agenda as presented, um, signify by saying aye. 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 It's been moved and properly seconded. Uh, all opposed? Do I hear any opposition? None heard. The agenda has been approved as presented. Uh, Attorney Turner, do we have any uh, requests for comments by the general public? Quite a few. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes, several persons who signed to address you regarding the revised bail schedule. First is Dr. Akimi Stout. Thank you, Dr. Stout. Good evening. Good evening. It's great to see you, Dr. Green. To the president of the board, Dr. Harrison, and all of those that sit there, thank you for being here. I'm here tonight to address the issue of the new bail schedule. The idea of changing the school day came before this board on Tuesday, May 1st of 2018, as an information item, meaning it was not voted on by the board. The next time the public was informed was when the new bail schedule was placed on the JPS website in July. JFTPSRP, the union, conducted a survey amongst employees shortly after the questions regarding the rationale behind changing the schedule and the potential impact on students, parents, and educators. When educators arrived on Monday, August 6th for the new school year, many were informed for the first time of the extension of the school day in middle and high schools just two days before school started. I began receiving phone calls from concerned teachers and support workers as to how and why this took place, especially without the involvement of the teachers, students, and community members, parents, and support workers whom this new schedule was going to affect. My response was to complete our survey to share, your, share the opinions and comments so that their voice would be heard. Tonight, we are sharing those results of the survey taken by 180 employees along with community members. Please take a look at the results that were handed out to you, as well as the comments. I think they will be most interesting. The union is asking for the board to follow the currently approved policy AF, which is school day. Therefore, the board of trustees shall authorize and establish the length of the school day according to the needs of the district and state statutes and regulations and return to the normal school day from the previous years. We understand the issues in which this change was meant to address. However, the community should have a say in this process. Next, you will hear from the JFTPSRP members who will read comments directly from educators who work for the Jackson Public School Districts. I do understand this is your first day in, but this is an issue that should have been brought not just as an information issue, if it's going to be something that was going to affect the staff, the community, and the parents. You should have gotten some intake, intel from those who it was going to affect. That did not happen. A department made a schedule change that should not have happened without board approval. There is a policy for that. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next is Lynn Schneider, same topic. Lynn Schneider. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, my name is Lynn Schneider. I'm a high school student teacher here in JPS. And I'm reading one comment that directly from Jackson Federation of Teachers Bell Schedule Survey. Months before the changing of the start time of school was officially announced, teachers, students, and parents were hearing rumors that we would begin school day later in order to alleviate the chronic late bus problem. Not until after contracts were signed was anything officially announced about changing the bell schedule for the 2018-19 school year. This seems like an act of bad faith on the part of JPS. The reasons for the change in start times were explained as a way to deal with days missed because of weather rather than the late bus situation. If this were actually true, then why not keep the same start time and just add instructional time? 
As late buses were a huge problem, most teachers seemed to believe this was a reasonable trade-off and assumed that it meant teachers would simply start their day later. Not until teachers had reported back to work were they informed that report times would be only five minutes later and the work day would end 30 minutes later than in 2017-2018. Another act of bad faith by the district. 25 minutes may not seem like much, but it equates to around 10 days of additional work time without compensation in a school year. While no teacher can really expect to get all the necessary work done of a teacher in an eight-hour day, much of that extra 25 minutes per day is not spent grading or planning or calling parents, but being on duty. Thank you for your comments. <coughs> Excuse me. Next is Jamal Simmons. Good evening. My name is Jamal Simmons and I'm a middle school teacher. I will be reading two comments from the Jackson Federation of Teachers PSRP Bell Schedule Survey. Comment number one, I understand that the district is doing what it feels will improve student achievement. However, I do not feel that teachers should be deprived of fair wages for their professional labor. Comment number two, I think changes like these should be sent directly to JPS employees. I don't think we should get an announcement via the JPS district website we should know in advance of mass announcements to the public. I often find out what's going on in the district by watching the local news. Without question, our opinion should be solicited. Better communication is needed. We want to have our voices heard. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Rachel Mathias, same topic. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rachel Mathias, and I'm a middle school teacher. Uh, I will be reading two comments from the Bell uh, survey that we did. Comment number one. Students missing days and being late plays a huge role in their performance in the classroom. We do not understand that some things are out of their, or we do understand that some things are out of their control and try our best to work with them. However, the district has to realize and understand that their teachers have families as well. We are already pushed to the limit with low pay and having to take work home, which takes away additional times from our families. Please be considerate of teachers, parents, students, and staff when you are making these types of decisions. Comment number two. I was forced to leave Murrah High School and return to the middle school sector in order to make my work schedule not conflict with my responsibilities as a parent in picking up my daughter. This change forced me to leave a school I was very passionate about because I graduated from Murrah. I was over the student council, homecoming, and food drives. I also co-chaired Mr. and Ms. Murrah and assisted the National School Lunch Week. I had a reduction in pay due to losing the supplemental pay I was receiving for sponsoring the student council. I also lost out on the school recognition pay for the test scores of my Biology 1 students, improved from the 2016-2017 school year that I was there. This has been a hardship all the way around. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. <clears throat> Eric Irvin, same topic. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Eric Irvin, and I'm a high school teacher. I will be reading two comments directly from the Jackson Federation of Teachers, PSRP, Bell Schedule Survey. Comment number one. The new Bell Schedule does not allow, uh, does not follow any of the best practices of educational researchers. Teenage attention spans are one minute per each year of his or her age. The late start is great as it follows the best practices for teens, but it isn't resolving the transportation issue. Comment number two. The additional time impacts educators who are trying to get higher degrees and college coursework for renewal. This limits their choices for schools and programs. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Miriam Gray, same topic.
Good evening. Good evening. My name is Miriam Gray, and I'm a high school teacher. I will be reading two comments directly from the Jackson Federation of Teachers PSRP Bell Schedule Survey. Comment number one. So far this school year, 2018-2019, we are still experiencing late buses in the morning and evening. Students are waiting to be picked up from school every day. I have several students who are constantly late to first period because of the buses, sometimes over 30 minutes. As a professional who signed a contract, I should have been consulted. And now I should be compensated for the extra time I have worked that isn't in the contract I signed with the district. Jackson Public Schools says they would like to retain teachers and be competitive in recruitment. If this is an honest claim, then we need to come up with a better solution together. Comment number two. JPS should have consulted with the educators before changing the bell schedule. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I'm going to apologize. I'll probably mispronounce this. Mr. Marj Marjanovic. Good evening. My name is Predrag Marjanovic, and I am a high school teacher. Uh, I will be reading two comments directly from the Jackson Federation of Teachers PSRP Bell Survey Schedule. Comment number one, <clears throat> the new Bell Schedule will stretch the students, teachers, and parents. I feel this change is unfair to all involved. If teachers are compensated, which they should be, that is more money that is being taken away from our students. Students are already short on supplies, meaning updated books, good working computers, and outdated library books. Comment number two, a longer school day is not a solution that helps students, teachers, parents, or support staff. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Board member, those are all the comments on the bell schedule. The last comment is Ms. Aneva Mae Pittman, who'd like to address you regarding concerns about JPS student welfare and input on alumni concerned citizen, alumni and concerned citizens. It's not six o'clock yet, so I'll say good afternoon. Mm -hmm. good I was afternoon. taught that six o'clock and afterward is good evening. So uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, I'm here because I am a graduate of Linear High School, 1952. And I'm also a ex-teacher of Jackson Public Schools. I taught 30 years and I got on out. And I'm glad I did. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> But I am concerned because at Lanier, we have, we had students last year that didn't even have dictionaries. 11th grade English students didn't have dictionaries. So I got busy and the public gave us dictionaries, a new set, <clears throat> and then then the National Alumni Association gave us another set that was the best set for our children. And I, with my heart leaped for joy when I saw this young man from Lanier who made a 33 mm -hmm. on his test score. Lanier, can any good come out of this area? They talk about that area. But these students over there, if given a chance, they can succeed and succeed very, very well. Now, I'm a member of the National Linear Alumni Association, and we do a lot of things for those children over there. Whatever they need, we try to supply it. Oh, I'm sorry uh, to the new president. I'm, I'm so sorry, but I'm so passionate about what I'm talking about here, about these children. You understand? <clears throat> now, you know, my son is a graduate also of the Jackson Public School System, and he had little or no help from his mama or his father, but he made a 30-something on his test score when he took that test, you know. So uh, I'm here in behalf of the children. You have one minute, okay. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Mr. Superintendent, uh, how you do? And, and, and welcome. And of course, I don't know whether or not, if you heard all this, whether you want to be Superintendent Jackson Public School or not. <laughs> <laughs> so if you decide, I'll, I'll try to help you get out of your contract, okay? 
<laughs> oh, by all means, did I say anything about the interim superintendent? Please do. That man has done a yeoman's job. Mm -hmm. And all of that paperwork. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and, and I just recently learned that we are members of the same church. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I wish I had known it earlier. <laughs> but, uh, and I, I'm going to tell you what I told him. Uh -oh. <laughs> Yeah, my time is up. You remember, you know, what I told him. I remember New Hope Baptist Church, and we got a big church over there and everything. And I said, we're going to, I was, we got kindergarten through the eighth grade, I believe, and we're going to expand it so he can be Zoom 10 over there. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Pittman. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. We'd like to uh, thank all of the citizens who came out tonight to share their uh, remarks and uh, particular <clears throat> and good information. Thank you so much. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Knox, do we have any uh, discipline cases to review? Thank you, sir. We appreciate your work and the, your team. Uh, Dr. Green. Uh, Superintendent reports or announcements. Thank you, Dr. Hairston, members of the board, and for those who are joined, uh, joined us this afternoon. Just want to thank you again for the warm welcome that I've received. Um, this has been um, just a, a wonderful reception and uh, beginning to this, this really important work. I'm very heartened by the, the team assembled and all of the hard work that's already gone into um, improving and addressing and trying to understand the issues and challenges that exist within our, our city and our, our district, but I'm also excited by all of the opportunities. Um, I, I choose to focus more on the assets, um, the strengths, the resources that exist or could exist to support us in thinking uh, and finding a third way. Um, not necessarily my way, not necessarily your way, but the third way, something that we can agree upon in order to uh, better serve our students and to move our district forward. So again, just want to thank all of those who have uh, shared uh, well wishes, even those who've offered to get me out of my contract. I take all of that as just, <laughs> I take it as love, so I appreciate it. <laughs> I think I'll be staying, though. Thank you for that. And with that, I want to uh, move on to one order of business that I'm actually really excited to, to, uh, to share with you. I'd like to use this time to honor a very special young man, Mr. Joseph Giles. Um, would you please come forward, Mr. Giles? Ah, uh, there you are. Come on up here, brother. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to ask you to just stand there in the middle and just be, uh, feel awkward for a while while we talk about you. Uh, a score of 33 on the ACT might be impressive to most, but it's not enough for this Lanier High School senior. He is unwavering in his commitment to academic excellence and is pursuing a perfect score of 36 on the college admissions test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to say, don't, don't miss your shouting point. Uh, Mr. Giles is a member of the Operation Shoestring Youth Council and was a strong advocate for the district's recent bond campaign. Yes, a gifted orator, he spoke passionately in support of the bond at a press conference and several community meetings. This college-bound senior is also a member of the JROTC at Lanier. At Lanier. Achieving a higher ACT score will increase his chances of re receiving more scholarships um, offerings, uh, thereby expanding his options for college. Please join me in recognizing this outstanding scholar with a round of applause. I'd also, like, I'd also like to acknowledge any relatives of Mr. Giles, uh, along with any Lanier staff or alumni. Uh, would you, too, please stand? And thank you for your support. Thank you. 
Madam President, that, that concludes my remarks. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Dr. Merritt, um, as you come up, I would like to, um, information items only board, to give our uh, citizens who are watching at home the opportunity to meet uh, Mr. Figures, Mr. Frank Figures, our new board member. So Frank, if you would just raise your hand and if the cameras could get a shot of you so that our citizens in Jackson, uh, representing Ward 3, he was sworn in this afternoon, and we're so excited to have Mr. Frank Figures on the school board. Thank you. <laughs> and a Lanier graduate, <laughs> longtime parent. Uh, thank you, Dr. Merritt, for your patience. Uh, would you share the CAP update? Sure. Uh, great evening to Dr. Ha Harrison and uh, Board of Trustees, Dr. Green. Uh, you have before you an updated CAP report. Um, before I start my report, I do want to recognize Mr. Ken Stamps from MDE, who is our district contact, who is sitting in the back. Uh, I appreciate him being here today. Um, I'm happy to report we have cleared another standard, uh, which is standard four that deals with fixed assets and finance, and so we want to give kudos to Ms. Miller for her work uh, on that standard. Yeah, kudos. <laughs> and just know that the team continues to work hard uh, as it relates to clearing these uh, standards, and we are continuing to operate with a sense of urgency uh, regarding this. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think that also echoes uh, Ms. Pittman's remarks about the uh, hard work that the team has accomplished thus far. Um, unfortunately, we do not have any of our student board representatives. We do. We have one. Oh, wonderful. Time. Okay, great. Erica Payton. Provine. Erica Payton from Provine. Yes. Yay. Thank you for joining us. We are so happy that we, um, uh, that, well, the students elected their representatives to the board, and uh, we are getting to know our student board members. Each ward uh, representative has uh, student board members that they will mentor and work with, and we hope to have uh, reports from one or more of our student board representatives at each of our board meetings. So thank you so much for coming. Good evening. My name is Erica Payson. I am a graduating fan from the one and only Provine High School. Uh -uh, uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to come talk to you guys about the positive things going on at Provine. I know we have an election coming up for senators, and I just want to let you guys know that we did register all 18 year old at Provine High School for voting. <laughs> I do serve as the 2018-2019 senior class president, Moo Alpha Theta president, and national underside president. So these are some big issues about voting that you know I have to be have the impact on. Mm -hmm. And um, we do have mentor programs going on as far as you know getting involved, having a voice because. Voting is a big issue because 18-year-olds to 25-year-olds don't vote. They don't know the importance of voting. So we have to teach our kids that you have yes. to have a voice because these are the people that you have to deal with down the road. Yes. And we do have an Under Armour All-American mm -hmm. at Provine High School. Mm -hmm. And I just want to let you guys know that I'll be talking about policies the next time that I see you guys and how they impact us. And you guys are doing a very good job. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always so refreshing to hear from our students to keep us focused as uh, we were reminded during our moment of inspiration. Another uh, wonderful presentation from Zach Wallace. I uh, did I see Zach stand up as a Lanier graduate as well. Please join us, Zach Wallace, everybody's favorite Hines County Circuit Clerk. <clears throat> 
I knew this young man in college, proud of him. Uh, I was the teacher, <laughs> you know, this is enough said, he was a student. But <laughs> 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 Thank you, Zach, for joining us, and uh, I know you were pleased to hear about the work going on at yes. Provine. Yes, great work. Thank you. Yes. You were going to share with us some of the importance of uh, voting. Yes. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm glad to be here. Thank God for being here. Thank God for inviting me. Thank you guys for inviting me. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm Zach Wallace, your Hines County Circuit Clerk. I want to talk a little bit about voter registration. <coughs> voter registration is very important. But what I'm trying to get the word out that uh, it's, let's do more than just being a registered voter. Let's be an active voter. So when you're having your voter drives, help the circuit clerks out by making sure everyone fill out their application completely, all the way down to your signature. Make sure they have the date of birth on there. Make sure they have the four, last four digits of their social security number or their drive license number. So once we get them, we have no problem at all putting them into the system and making sure that the voter cause goes out in a timely manner. I have a great staff. They've been, I've been working in the circuit clerk's office for 21 years. I brought two of my staff members here. Uh, I have a great staff, like I said. Uh, I don't know what to say about them. Uh, a lot of times uh, I see work that needs to be done, and they go ahead and, and tackle it. They work on Saturdays, and sometimes they come in on Sundays and make sure everything's taken care of. So I don't know what to say about them. They make me look good. They make me look good. But um, back to the voter drives. Uh, they do a good job of putting applications in. And like I said, uh, we want to make sure that voter cards get out in a timely manner to make sure everyone, everyone know as soon as possible where to go to vote. Because that's very important. It's not only being a registered voter. You want to make sure they go out to the precinct. We have over 140,000 registered voters. And over less than half of those people go out to vote. So what I want to do I want to maybe have less voter drives. I know that sounds crazy. I want people to register the votes as much as possible, but I want to let people know that we do have election November the 6th. So while you're having your voter drives, let people know that there's election November the 6th, that they can come to the clerk's office and vote absentee, especially with students in high school that's 18, even the college students. If they are going home or they're not able to go home, tell them about absentee voting. Because that's the most important thing, not only being a registered voter, but being an active voter and continue to be an active voter. That's our message now, be a registered active voter. So just like I tell people when I go out to the high schools, and I plan on saying the same thing tomorrow, I plan on being at Merle uh, tomorrow at 1030. If you're going to go get a drive license, you plan on driving. If you plan on being a registered voter, you should plan on voting every election. And you want to vote for the best person to represent you, to represent your area. And luckily, I'm blessed that you all chose me to be your circuit clerk, and I thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, Zach, for your good work. We appreciate you. And thanks to your whole team, because this is not an easy job, but we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, board members, uh, the agenda indicates we have no information. Action items, we'll move to item nine, our consent agenda items under finance. Ms. Sherilyn Miller. Thank you, Dr. Harrison, Dr. Green, members of the board. I present to you. Sir, excuse me, I'm sorry, Sherilyn. Okay. Uh, on item two? B and C. Oh, B and C. Okay. Okay. Would you like to ask questions? That'll work. Okay. Um, we're going to hear the uh, items individually. Yes, madam. Um, uh, well, wait. I think my board is still has something to tell me. Our board. Do we have, um, can we take a moment of privilege for Joseph Giles to address the board? He had said, I know it's not an agenda item, but we did recognize him and he wanted a moment to, to say something. Yes, certainly. Uh, during the... Uh, if that's okay. Yeah, sure, certainly. We lo always love to hear from our students. <laughs> <laughs> We're the school board. <laughs> Thank you uh, so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
Um, I'm a, um, well, thank you for having me up here today. And um, thank you, Dr. Green and the rest of the board for listening to what I have to say. Um, I'm, I know that my representative from Lanier wasn't here tonight, so I'd like to speak a little bit on her behalf. I know if she was here, she would tell you uh, of the issue that some of the students were having or was getting out of their dual enrollment classes. And I um, know that a lot of the schools, other JPS high schools have that same problem. But I just wanted to say to you that in the past, JPS has had a problem with student engagement. I think that all of the adults and uh, some of the teachers can understand that all students have opinions about the way that their schools are ran. All students have opinions about the way their educations are served to them. But what all students do not have is that empowerment that it takes to get up and talk about it and to voice their concerns. I know that they probably had problems with teachers having that same empowerment. So I just think that in the future, when the adults need to be conscious of the concerns of students and cognizant of the courage that it takes to stand up in front of a room full of adults to voice our concerns. And um, I just want to thank you as we move forward trying to improve student engagement. Thank you so much for your comments. Uh, we appreciate that, and we are always welcome hearing from our students. Uh, Ms. Miller, <coughs> we are going to consider item A, and then uh, as we have questions, as we move through the items, we'll ask them. Thank you, Dr. Harrison, Dr. Green, members of the board. I present to you item A, approval of accounts payable and activity fund claims for September 8th through September 21st. Item B, approval of the request to ratify the 16th section adjustment for Animal Center, Inc. Item C, approval of the request to ratify the 16th section lease of diamond wholesale distributors. And item D, approval of various donations. Thank you, Ms. Miller. I, I think I'm hearing a request uh, to Pull items B and C. Mm -hmm. That's correct, board yes. members? Thank you. So we will pull item B and C for discussion. And then we, do I hear a motion to approve A and I move that we approve D. consent agenda items finance A and D, withholding B and C for further consideration. Thank you. I hear a motion to approve uh, consent agenda item. It's been seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we have approved consent agenda items finance A and D. And now we will hear item B. Is that correct? Item B is the approval to, um, of the request to ratify the 16th session rental adjustment for Animal Center Incorporated. Sir. Yes, if our yeah, board members, if you have any comments or questions. So I, I, I just wanted to know, is it customary to use uh, Brandon appraisers for Jackson properties? We have a, the Secretary of State requires certain, has certain requirements for appraisers to, that can do 16 section property. There's a list that the that Secretary of State has over those appraisers that are authorized to do those type of properties. At this time, the one appraiser that was certified by the Secretary of State has retired. And so the 16 section committee uh, went through some interviews and there was one other gentleman who was seeking that position. We did not not, the, the committee did not feel as though he was um, the best in this interest, and so this person was selected to do that appraisal work for the district. And, and the other issue was, uh, like that one, is it customary for such long-term leases own these 16 section properties. Yes, sir. That's the nature of the 16 section properties. They go from either zero to 99 years, and they are long term, uh, long -term leases. They do have uh, different um, periods of time that we come back and do reassessments. It's either a five year period or eight year period or 10 year period to be reassessed, but they are the nature of them is that they are long term leases. And the reassessment of these can lead to 
Uh, more revenue? Correct, either more or less depending on the appraisal of the area. The majority of our 16 section properties are in uh, the South Jackson area, south of Gallatin Street and, and south of 20. So those are those areas appraised, of course, a little bit differently. But yes, they are uh, up for various times that are set according to um, the way their leases are structured, that they will be appraised at different times. So they can at some point in time appraised for higher and sometimes lower and, and I think in these instances the same amount. Do we have further questions regarding item B? Do I hear a motion to approve item B? Request to ratify the 16th section rental adjustment of Animal Center Inc. So moved. Do I it's been moved and seconded to approve item B. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, item B has been approved. Uh, item C, approval of request to ratify the 16th section lease of Diamond Wholesale Distributors. Are there questions from Ms. Miller or comments? Well, same. it was the same, same for the both of them. Okay, great. Thank you. Do I hear um, a motion to approve item C? So moved. Second? Second. It's moved and properly seconded. All signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, item C has been approved as well. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Miller. Thank you. Consent agenda items general. Uh, item A, Ms. Faulkner, approval of partnership agreement between innovations. Consent agenda. Oh, thank you. Uh, board members, do we have any items to pull from the consent agenda items? Uh, Madam President, could we please pull item B for discussion? Okay, item B for discussion. Any other for discussion? Madam President, I move that we approve consent agenda items general A, C, and D, holding B for further consideration. Second. Renewed and second that we uh, approve items 10 A, C, and D, and hold B for discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Hearing none. Uh, Dr. Belcher, item B, oh, we, that's been approved. Items A, C, and D have been approved. Thank you. Dr. Um, Belcher. For item B, um, I have the representation from the school and also the organization. Um, Ms. Murray, could you come forward? And um, the representation from the organization as well. Um, this program has been in Ms. Murray's school before. Um, we're just going about it a different way and she can ex under, um, explain it more to you at Bar Elementary. Thank you. Good evening, Ms. Murray. Good evening. Good evening, board uh, and Dr. Green. Uh, this is year two for the I Village program, after school program that is sponsored by Center for Social Entrepreneurship. Um, the program piloted last year, we targeted our tier three students as well as our bottom 25% students. Um, if you looked at the data, the data did show that more than half of those students did uh, improve their skill score points with STAR uh, beginning of the year to the end of the year. Those students who showed a little progression, uh, there are a lot of factors that played into that. Some of those are attendance, um, as well as um, those students being uh, students that have deficit areas. And so uh, as a school, we have targeted those students with our MTSS process to intervene with them. Thank you. Um, board members, do we have any questions or comments uh, regarding this information in the uh, MOU between the Center for Social Entrepreneurship and JPS? Uh, Dr. Harrison, this is Ed Sivak. I have no um, 
issues with the, the contract or the services that are being um, suggested or provided. And um, But I did have a question that I wanted to ask board members for consideration. Uh, on uh, item seven in the memorandum of understanding is a what called the renewal term. Um, and it appears to have language in it that auto renews this agreement. And I wanted us to consider striking the auto renewal term. Um, this contract would still run October 1st through May 2nd, uh, but it would require a report back to the board for us to make a decision about renewing the engagement. My concern with the auto renewal language isn't with the contractor, it's just that it could be something that goes on and on without updates, given everything else that comes before the board. So I just throw that out there for discussion. Right, um, I think that is a good point, and this board has talked about in the past of trying to limit our contracts to a year. Of Board members, do you have comments? Thank you for raising that point, Ed. I would agree with Dr. Sivak. Um, my questions about this were answered earlier, um, but I think this is a, a good point, um, and so I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. I don't have uh, an, is an issue with the uh, MOU, but my questions were, um, we're hoping to serve up to 30 to 50 children, and it's three days a week. Uh, it seems like yes. a very uh, worthwhile program, and it engages children whole body. It's the mind and the physical activity. Is there a reason it's just three days a week? Um, well, um, we uh, consider church nights on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and then, of course, Fridays. Week so weekends, we, okay. Yeah. Now, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, we are grateful for the, uh, for the three days a week. And uh, we look forward to looking more at the data and uh, to see how we might could expand something like this to other schools. And we say there's no cost, and I know there's no monetary cost to the district, but you've got <coughs> robust partners who are able to keep this going. Uh, good evening, Dr. Hairston, and to the rest of the board. I want to acknowledge Mr. Fevers also and um, welcome the new superintendent. My name is Tony Cooley. I'm the CEO of Systems Electric Coating, one of um, a, the local business basically here in the uh, Jackson area. Our corporate office is based in West Jackson, and um, the Center for Social Entrepreneurship is our nonprofit, if you if you will. It is fully, the program is fully funded uh, privately by uh, my family, and so um, um, we would make a commitment to the school system here and to West Jackson um, specifically, and so it is, it is privately funded. Right. Yeah, we really it, appreciate that. It, uh, uh, generally, uh, it is, uh, we've beefed it up a little bit more this year, but it's going to be a, about a, a 30, 30 plus thousand dollar program, and that's about uh, 1260 per per kid, so. Great, thank yeah. you. That's kind of what I was uh, trying to discern sure. and, as to how we could bring this to scale or and find other partners who could follow a, <coughs> a similar model. Indeed, thank you. Thank you for your work, Hi, we appreciate Sean. it. Um, <laughs> and as a Cooley family to be longtime supporters mm -hmm. of the district, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that it will be done quite well. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I appreciate the board, know very all, everyone on the board, and <laughs> I, I want to thank you all for what you do for the city of Jackson generally and what you do for our children specifically. And again, welcome to Dr. Green. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your support. We appreciate your staff that you brought with us. Thank you. Ms. Mary, Dr. Belcher, is that? That's all you have to say. I'll keep up. That's all I have. <laughs> that was quite enough. Uh, board, do I hear a motion to approve the MOU between uh, the district and S Social Entrepreneurship, Center for Social Entrepreneurship? Uh, Madam President, I so move with the um, update of the term um, to be an annual term. And right, to strike the automatic removal right. language. 
I second the motion. It's been moved and seconded that we approve this MOU with the uh, notation that we will strike the automatic renewal and it would be a one year. Do it. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we have approved this MOU. Thank you so much. <coughs> we are on number 11. <coughs> Consent agenda items, personnel, Ms. Lyons, approval of staff personnel matters. Good evening, Good evening. Uh, to Dr. Green, Dr. Harrison, members of the board. On behalf of the administration, I ask for the approval of staff personnel matters as listed in board material. Madam President, I would like to pull H1 through H4 for executive session. Thank you. Um, I hear a Request to remove items H1 through H4 for executive session. Is that our pleasure board? So moved. Do we need to vote on that? Second. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. So we have approved. Now we need to vote on the approval of the staff personnel matters with those exempted, correct? Yes, do I hear a second to the uh, motion to that effect? I think we did, we just approved to pull them. Now we got to, that was the only one there. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> we have approved the staff personnel matters with the uh, elimination of those. Thank you, board, for your patience. Thank Ms. You. Lyons, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I, I actually think you might need to be a, a little bit more just for purposes of clarity, because mm -hmm. I didn't understand that to be the case. I, I thought you had just pulled the H1 to H4 for executive session, so mm -hmm. you do need to take a step to approve, approve all the remaining the, all items. The remaining. Okay. I, I exactly. move that we approve all remaining items with the exception of H1 to H4. <laughs> Thank you. It's been moved in here second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Thank you, board and our attorney, for keeping us accurate. Um, the consent agenda items under 11, approval of staff personnel matters, have been approved with the exclusion of items H1 through H4. You need to carry the vote. All in favor <laughs> say aye. 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 All aye. opposed? Aye. Hearing none. No nays. It has been approved. Okay, <clears throat> board, do we have other business? <clears throat> We have board member on the phone. Uh, item 13, consideration to hold an executive session. I move that we consider holding an executive session. Do I hear a second? Second. It's been moved and properly seconded to hold an executive, consider to hold an executive session. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we will adjourn to consider to hold an executive session. We're adjourned. Oh. Oh, we have to vote. During the room, we're not adjourned. We're not adjourned. Thank you all for coming tonight. <laughs> we appreciate your participation and your patience. It's wonderful when you've got a team behind you. Thank you so much, uh, Sherwin, Dr. Green. We would like to announce, before you all leave, that on our webpage, you know, we passed um, a resolution to form our board oversight, bond oversight committee, that the bond referendum the citizens so generously and overwhelmingly passed. So we have posted on our webpage the information that we are looking for, a representative from each ward, as well as an application. So please spread this information widely if you know of citizens in your wards who you think would be great to serve, has some qualifications to serve on a, a project such as this bond issue, as well as has the ability to bring that information back to our community. Because the, part of the uh, purpose, in addition to have the oversight, is to have the information shared widely across the community so all of our citizens will understand what uh, we're trying to accomplish with uh, transparency. So thank you so much, Sherman. So that is our webpage, and you can find it just by going to the JPS webpage.
And we're ex hoping that the applications will be in soon because we by October 15th, so the board can meet and select the Bond Oversight Committee and make that announcement by the first. Three, we have three so far, so please tell your friends and neighbors and your church members and your neighborhood partners to step up and join us in this very important work. So far we have two from Ward 1 and one from Ward 4. Two weeks, please get the word out. Thank you so much.